So this video is going to be made from a privacy perspective, not a political one. We all have our own opinions, but regardless of that, I think privacy is a universal right and not something that's optional just because you agree or disagree with the topic. Now, as this video is going to be about privacy and not politics, if you do have the urge to leave your political opinion on the underlying topic down below, please don't. And lastly, while this video may not be relevant to most of my audience according to my channel analytics, perhaps you have a parent, sibling, friend, significant other, or someone you care about that could benefit from this information, so feel free to share this with them. Companies sell and share your data every day without your knowledge. Whether that's a company selling your data to a third party who you didn't realize you consented it to be shared with, or some government agency requesting that data because they have a suspicion. It's nothing new where government agencies request your data from tech companies. It's so common now that big tech have portals specifically set up for law enforcement agencies to request data. There are numerous cases of people being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and their data that was gathered by third parties was then used against them. The channel The Hated One has a great video on this topic, and I'll link that down below. He talks about someone who was arrested as a murder suspect because his phone location data and some CCTV footage of his vehicle put him in the vicinity of the murder. They eventually found he was innocent as he wasn't in possession of his phone at the time of the murder and someone else was using his vehicle. Regardless, the articles that showed up on the internet when you would search for his name destroyed his reputation. I wanted to start with a quick overview of some basics when it comes to local versus cloud storage. If you open an app and are required to create an account, there's a 99% chance that your data is stored in the cloud. Everyone loves to throw around the word cloud, but really all the cloud means is someone else's computer. Whether that's a server at Google, Amazon, Microsoft, or someone's basement at their parents' house, but what this boils down to is that your data is not on your device, it's on some other computer that's out of your control. There are typically privacy policies that govern how this data can be used, but those can be changed at any time. At least once a year I get an email from PayPal or eBay that they made updates to their privacy policy, and I don't read them. It's unfortunate that you need at least a four-year law degree to read these terms and understand them. Data stored in the cloud is always at risk. Perhaps it's being analyzed and used to improve the company's products, sold to third parties for some extra income, leaked to the public because of a misconfiguration, obtained by hackers who wanted it, or maybe the company was forced to hand it over because of a court order from a law enforcement agency. Now this brings us to local storage, which means the data remains on your device under your control you own your data. The main disadvantage to using local storage is that if you lose that local copy of your data, or in this example your phone, that data is gone. There's no cloud backup of the data because no online account was created. So if you do decide to use local storage for an app, make sure you know how to take a backup. To me this realization is also a bit freeing. Your data is under your control and it can be erased at any time. So for the example in the video, I'm going to be talking about a few period tracking apps for Android and iOS that use local storage on your phone. This means your data will be stored on your device and not someone else's server where it could be accessed by a third party you never intended to have access to your data. So I want to mention before I show the apps that I found that I lack the necessary hardware to actually test these apps fully. So for that reason, I reached out to some of my non-male friends to see what features they like about the apps they're currently using. So here's a list of the important features they told me about. Not all the apps have all of these features, and I'll make sure to point that out when I'm talking about them. The first app is only on Android, and it's called Drip. The project is based out of Berlin. Nice job, Germany. This app is open source, which means that the source code is available for review. All data stays on your device. There are no accounts or cloud storage. I did install it on my device and test out the functionality. As far as features go, Drip doesn't have the ability to enter the method of birth control you're on to help track that, so that's a bit of a downside. Another possible downside I noticed is that if you do any sort of temperature tracking, it's only in Celsius. So to my American friends, you'll have to do some conversions. So even though it is lacking some features, I would suggest trying this app out. If you're on Android and interested in trying out Drip, head on over to this URL, which I'll also link down below, and download it directly from there. If you use F-Droid for apps, the version on there is currently out of date, so it's better to get it directly from the source. From what I saw online, an iOS version of this app will be available in August of 2022. There is another option on Android called Periodical. I gotta give them credit on the names for these apps, they're pretty creative. This one is open source as well, but I found the app to be very basic. If you don't like Drip, then I would suggest giving this one a try and see what you think. The last app I'll recommend, which is available for both Android and iOS, is called Yuki. I'm about 67% sure I pronounced that correctly. This app is more feature-rich, it has an educational section in it, along with custom reminders and more options to track. 
As far as the list goes that I mentioned earlier, this app has most, if not all, of those features available. The downside is that it's not open source. That means there's no access to the source code. Not that this makes it inherently bad, it's just something to be aware of. This app does store your data locally, requiring no cloud account. So as far as privacy goes, I still consider this a win. So if you're on iOS, you'll be able to download this app from the App Store. And if you're on Android and you don't like the previous two suggestions, you'll be able to download this app from Google Play or from the Aurora Store. Additionally, I did test all three apps after denying them the network permission on Android, which means none of them had access to the internet. All three apps still functioned as expected in my testing, which means none of them require a connection to a third party. While I didn't think that they would, this is just one more way to validate the privacy claims of an app. I always like to say that when it comes to privacy, you're usually going to have to go through a bit of discomfort when it comes to switching apps or operating systems, but it's worth the effort in the long run. It's better to work on changing your habits now instead of when something becomes a problem and you have no choice but to change. So while we're on the topic of privacy, if you're interested in learning more about how to regain some privacy on your mobile device by ditching your iPhone or the stock OS on your Google Pixel device, I'll link to some videos down below and on the screen now I've made talking about these options.